the Distribution Dev Room. Our first speaker this morning is, no, don't undo typing. Our first speaker this morning is going to be Andre, Andres Chedora. Andre. Oh, Andrew. Butchered it. What? <laughs> Andres Chedora, uh, who will be presenting Managing Build Infrastructure of a Debian Derivative. Is the talk is being recorded? Yes, the talk is being recorded. Uh, the video has been set up and his microphone has been unmuted. There's a, it requires no human interaction. You sure about this? <laughs> Looks like it's only uh, pointing at the wall. On the door. Uh, <laughs> it's supposed to be pointed correctly. Like <laughs> well, wall is also quite a nice thing to see. Uh, you are correct. <laughs> you are in frame, sir. Thank you very much. Maybe I get a t-shirt for that. Speak to the five folks at uh, the top. Okay, so uh, I probably I uh, I don't need to present myself once again, uh, but I I will do this anyway. Uh, so I'm Andre and I'm a Debian developer, um, and uh, well, I uh, I started using Debian uh, around 2006, and very soon I I understood that well Debian is great because of the contributors. So I started contrib contributing myself. Uh, at first by sending bug reports, then patches, and then finally uh, I became, well, I started ma maintaining some packages on my own, and in 2013 I became a Debian developer, uh, and started maintaining even more things in Debian, and uh, then two years later I well, started working for Collabora, um, um, an open source consultancy, uh, and which is great uh, in the way that we were doing lots of fun things with open source in our work time. And uh, at Cobra, I um, um, started working on a project which is called Apertis, about which I will talk uh, uh, today. And um, uh, just uh, some background, I never run any Debian infrastructure in my life, even though I, uh, I've been part of a Debian project for, for quite some time. And uh, so I've got no idea how to run like, proper things like build D or deinstall and other things. Uh, and um, because uh, when it, uh, I started working on a purchase, I uh, had to manage Quite similar things, but uh, not based on uh, normal Debian software at all. Right, so Apertis is uh, a Debian derivative distribution, uh, which is based, in fact, not just on Debian, but on Ubuntu and a bunch of other packages of, uh, we've developed ourselves. It's been originally developed for, um, for automotive purposes, in particular entertainment systems uh, in the cars. But since then, the focus has been shifted to all sorts of other uh, onboard computers in cars. Uh, and uh, uh, as a part of the project, we provide lots of infrastructure for development based on Apertis, uh, which means uh, code hosting at the moment is SIGIT, but we're planning to um, migrate to GitLab soon. Uh, backtracking system, uh, code review, at the moment it's Fabricator, um, and um, of course package build services, image generation uh, services, and uh, automated testing based on Lava. Um, but which I was going to talk as well at first, but unfortunately my talk wasn't accepted. <laughs> so. Um, Apertis is mostly uh, based on Ubuntu at the moment, so we are a derivative of a derivative. Uh, we take a bunch of packages directly from Debian, most notably uh, Systemd, Dbus, um, and some other things. And uh, we've developed uh, a few software frameworks of uh, our own APIs and uh, other software packages. So, as I mentioned, we use Systemd for process tracking and uh, application lifecycle uh, life tracking. 
we started using the Alma many years ago when it was just a new thing uh, in Ubuntu only. So th this was one of the reasons we used Ubuntu because they were upstream for up Alma. Um, about a year ago, I think we've migrated from Xorg to Wayland for graphics, and we've been using GStreamer for multimedia playback since the beginning. Um, in the purchase, we I use Flatpak and OS3. So the application bundle format is based on Flatpak, which itself is uh, based on OS3. Uh, it's not quite the same thing as Flatpak's bundles, but we plan to uh, migrate to actual Flatpak and not a solution based on Flatpak soon. Uh, we have uh, an update system based on OS3. Originally we had uh, our own system based on beta, uh, butter fast snapshots uh, to, to make sure that updates are atomic and we've got re recovery modes and uh, so on, but uh, because of certain uh, drawbacks of uh, butter fast, we uh, developed our own system based, uh, well, we've developed a system based on OS3. So, a um, couple of more details. So, uh, first of all, uh, the Butterfest system had significant maintenance uh, effort because we had quite lots of custom code based around uh, w w working with Butterfest snapshots. Then our bootloader didn't support Butterfest, so we couldn't use it on slash boot, for example, and other file systems which had to be something else. Um, with ButterFS, we needed to use InitromFS at all times, uh, which isn't the best thing sometimes in embedded systems. And because the updated directly manipulated uh, ButterFS volumes, it was unsuitable for, for example, uh, unprivileged containers. And then with ButterFS, testing was a bit difficult, and ButterFS itself has quite a lot of issues which are being tackled, but still, like, it's not, I myself don't consider it a really production ready system. So in comparison, OS3 uh, works with any file system at all, any file system which supports Unix uh, semantics. Um, you can store multiple trees in the same repository, which is a definite benefit, and you don't need extra partitions for upgrades, so it saves quite some space. Um, because it's a more uh, complete solution on its own, uh, we have less custom code, um, so um, the maintenance is much easier. And uh, because it's a user space solution, it works better with containers, and we can use it with unprivileged containers as well. So, um, uh, some people may ask a question, why are we using this crazy mix of Ubuntu and Debian and not just Debian because, you know, Debian is great, universal and obviously it's free software and uh, it's a community and not a company. So, um, well, despite all of those great things about Debian, at the moment when Apertis was created, um, there were certain uh, issues with Debian. Uh, most importantly, um, uh, if there are people here who, are, uh, here who ran Sarge, for example, they may remember that it took, I think, four years or about that to get it released. Because in Debian, the policy is the release is when the release is ready. Uh, there's no, um, the, until recently, um, there wasn't any uh, particular timing employed. Uh, so, if there were too many release, uh, release critical bugs, the, uh, the release might be delayed even years. Since then it's changed, but when a purchase was created, it was still an issue. And then stable, it's a bit too stable for many people, and you know, with the frequency of releases it means that you get updates only once uh, in two years, and um, it's not always what we want. Uh, and then with unstable, uh, things may break too often. And, well, I myself broke unstable two weeks ago when I updated uh, one of the key bits of it, which is POSIX shell. Unfortunately, I didn't do much testing, uh, didn't do enough testing, and I uploaded something which was broken for a couple of hours until I, I uploaded fix. And a couple of people, well, quite a few people ran into this issue and well, it's been resolved since then, but this is an example of 
what may happen in a stable, we cannot use it directly. You can pull all, all of the updates from there. So Ubuntu, uh, on the other hand, has also quite a large install base because, well, lots of people who are too lazy uh, to run Debian, they just run Ubuntu, for example. Uh, and uh, so there's quite a lot of testing despite, uh, you know, more frequent releases. So uh, Ubuntu is an upstream for AppArmor, which was quite important when the Apertus was created because we heavily rely on AppArmor for uh, privilege separation and security. And um, well, they've got uh, regular timed releases and they also had uh, an LTS when Apertus was created. So these days we've got LTS in Debian as well, but um, but back then it wasn't uh, yet like that. So there are a couple of downsides. Obviously, uh, uh, Apertus is a derivative of a derivative. Oh, what's going on? Oh, uh, oh. yeah. Um, uh, so uh, this complicates uh, upgrades and rebases because, uh, you know, uh, in every release of Ubuntu, there's quite a lot of uh, updates from coming from Debian originally, and when we are rebasing to a new version of Ubuntu, it just uh, this impact amplifies. And then we don't really need all of the things we have on Ubuntu, like Mayor, for example, and other things. So it, it doesn't add any value for, for us because we use Wayland. We don't even use Xorg anymore. Um, I think there's a, there's a slide missing. Uh, anyway, uh, so we are currently reconsidering this um, um, decision and we might change back to Debian because lots of issues Debian had when the decision was taken are no longer issues and uh, it might make sense to rebase to Debian LTS, for example. Right, so... Um, and now a bit more about the uh, infrastructure we have. So um, uh, the core of, of it all is uh, open build service, which uh, builds packages uh, uh, in controlled environments and uh, uh, maintains uh, repositories from which we create images and the, the updates and so on. Um, so uh, this code hosting and review tool at the moment it's a combination of SIGIT and uh, Fabricator, uh, but we'll, we'll be using GitLab quite soon for, for code hosting and probably for reviews as well. Um, so uh, the, um, we, we pull uh, a few uh, packages directly into our Git like systemd and dbus so that we can apply our uh, patches to them if needed or we can uh, use newer versions from Debian and the rest goes like the normal packages from Ubuntu Debian they go directly into OBS um, but I'll tell you more about what OBS is and how we use it in a moment so uh, uh, OBS um, Every time it needs to build a package, it creates a fresh root of, uh, of Apertis in this case, builds a package there and uh, publishes the, the binary packages, the devs, uh, in an internal repository. So all of the source packages are version controlled. Um, the system resembles uh, subversion in a way because it, it doesn't handle like proper branches like in Git. Uh, you can create branches, but they, it's basically just a, a copy with some version information, which you can build packages in their own space. They are not published in the normal repositories, so you can test how things work in the branch. And uh, well, it, it has some quite some fine-grained uh, access control tools, so you can uh, let your users. Uh, some users can just read packages, some can commit, some can do reviews and so on. But well, a uh, bit more information on OBS uh, was in the talk of Andrew Lee yesterday. You can watch it online. So, um, the Apertus is split in multiple components, uh, which are target, development, helper libs and so on, and importantly snapshots. Each of them is a uh, OBS project on its own, so it's more or less independent uh, from others. Um, 
uh, in OBS, project can, can um, use each other for builds. So, for example, uh, uh, here, uh, development can depend on packages from target, and SDK can, develop, uh, can depend on packages from development. Uh, and uh, this means that if the uh, packages uh, in development require dependencies to build, from target they are installed in the truth by OBS and used. But uh, normally not other way around. So an exception of this is basically target because target needs some packages in development to build. But uh, basically this split is mostly for, for images. We, we, we have separate target images and we don't want development stuff like GCC in them. So while GCC can be used to, for builds, it, it's not installed in the images. So it, it naturally goes to development, not target. But Linux kernel is obviously in, in the target. So um, when packages get built, they are published in an internal uh, repositories in OBS, which are not in apt formats, but they are used for OBS itself to uh, build other things, basically. So when your package is dependent on something else, OBS internally uh, fetches the dev package and pre-installs it in the truth. Uh, but for uh, Apt, we use RepriPro, which takes packages from OBS internal repositories and publishes them in a format Apt can understand. Um, so uh, in OBS, it's quite easy to do full distribution rebuilds by just adding one more repository to the project. Uh, it, OBS starts rebuilding all packages in this repository, and they go nowhere. They stay in the repository, but they're not published in the actual Apt repositories until you explicitly ask Obi to do this. And, uh, well, it's uh, quite a tiny screenshot on this screen, but um, basically you can add as many repositories in OBS you, you like, and you can select, like, all, like you can tell OBS on which other uh, projects it uh, depends and what architectures to build for. As you can see, we don't support i586, I for example, or v 6 um, So, um, right, so uh, as I mentioned, the packages uh, to which we apply no changes relatively to Ubuntu or Debian, they go direct to OBS, we just import them with no changes. Uh, some packages where the patches are trivial, like, you know, fixing minor, uh, minor uh, tiny things, we maintain them directly in the OBS using the, uh, the um, OBS version control system, and um, we just apply patches Top them in the uh, in the Debian source package and in increment the version so, so, so that um, we can see where we have local changes. And uh, we use a fork of Ubuntu's Mergematic tool, which uh, pulls the updates from Ubuntu and does automatic merges when it's possible. Uh, and uh, then uh, packages where this approach just doesn't work, we keep them in Git and use Git for merges and uh, other things so that we, uh, it's just, we don't rely on Mergematic at all. Uh, those packages like I mentioned, systemd, dbus, and uh, mesa, and so on. So uh, for non apertis packages, packages from uh, Debian and Ubuntu, we use Deb14 uh, format from Debian. So we have uh, upstream apert and apertis namespaces for tags and branches. Uh, obviously, when we we you, when we try to reuse the uh, Git repositories from Debian, so we just we also have Debian slash something uh, tags and branches in the repositories normally, and uh, we use Git build package and uh, gbppq to manage uh, the uh, patches in the repository. You can read about them uh, in in one pages for Git build package. Basically, I won't go into details. And for native apertures package, we use a similar uh, similar um, scheme. So the master is like the the current the version in the current release, and there are branches for previous releases like 17.12, and. Um, um, and we normally, uh, uh, it's an approach which is uh, not accepted in Debian usually, so we keep the Debian metadata, uh, the packaging stuff in the master, not in a separate branch as normally is done in Debian, because it just adds some maintenance burden for, for no reason. And we, uh, we normally 
just put tags uh, on uh, on uh, on those branches for the releases. Uh, the v uh, the v version numbers are normally like zero, and then the the release number and the, the, the just increment. So um, Jenkins builds every commit on those branches uh, in in a, in a controlled environment. If the build succeeds, it commits the result to OBS, and OBS creates merge requests and builds it in a proper truth, which we then review and and, com and, and uh, merge. We use a tool called Build Snapshot, written by Simon, uh, which just creates releases out of Git branches, and uh, if it's a um, uh, work in progress, not tagged as a proper release, it just builds a package which has the, um, this, this funny Git, num uh, Git revision number in the version. Uh, so that we can see its uh, development version, and uh, well, every time new patches are submitted at Fabricator, they also get applied and built by Jenkins. So um, until recently, we used Linaro image tools to build images. It was split in multiple stages. I will talk about this later. Um, but Linaro image tools proved to be quite difficult to use and maintain. So uh, we've changed it to uh, our custom tool called Debos, which does the process much better and reliable. So um, this was the original scheme we used. So we had uh, uh, we had this separation between uh, system um, hardware dependent and independent parts. So OS pack was basically a, uh, a tarball with the root file system, not including any hardware dependent things. And hardware pack was the kernel, firmware, and other things. And we would combine them into images like this. So um, uh, with DevOps, uh, DevOps is a tool written in Go, uh, which is basically Debian OS image builder. Uh, mm, it we, with DevOps, we split the build process into stages in a YAML file, and every stage does like its own thing. And um, you can use templates similar to Jinja 2, basically, and, and uh, select parts of it depending on the type of the image. It's a really cool tool, and um, uh, written by Short, Simmons, and Denise Pinkin, basically. And uh, here you can read more about it. So um, in this tool, we, we got rid of the hardware packs as such. We still use the term, but it's actually just packages and files installed into the images when they're built. Um, we also generate uh, sysroots for a software development kit. And uh, then the Jenkins jobs, they trigger tests in Lava. And uh, when the, pack, uh, the images are built, the, it also goes through the fabricate and closes the bugs which were fi fixed in the images. Uh, so this is how it looks in Jenkins when it's all green and, and happy. <laughs> so um, there are quite some challenges working with all of this because well, obviously, Mergematic cannot handle anything more complicated than just a couple of patches applied locally. Um, Git does help, but we cannot put all things in Git, so we need to decide what can we do, uh, what, what can we put in Git and what have we uh, maintain manually. Removing old packages is quite tricky sometimes because you need to check well, what's gone in Ubuntu and Debian and so on. And there are a couple of more issues with OBS, basically, because OBS is not Debian, in, uh, Debian stuff, and uh, it doesn't do the same things with building. Well, as I mentioned, we're going to migrate to GitLab soon and become a common platform for automotive system, automotive systems, and not just um, infotainment. And to learn more, go to aperti.org, and there's a wiki where you can read those things and uh, learn more about the system. Hey, this is it.